Hi, I'm Kevin. Today I wanted to show you how to make the uniquely delicious scones that I was served at Brown's Hotel in London. Now, these scones freeze perfectly, so you can make them days or weeks or even months ahead of time. And then just bake them off the next time you wish to serve scones for afternoon tea. Now, these scones are rather unusual in that you mix them in a stand mixer outfitted with the paddle attachment. What I have here is 500 grams of all-purpose flour. That's about three and a half cups of flour, but you really should weigh the flour. And to this, I'm going to add a pinch of salt and two tablespoons of baking powder. Then add 90 grams, that's about a half cup, of caster sugar. You could use regular granulated sugar here. And then mix these dry ingredients at low speed for about 30 seconds, just until they're well combined. All right, now, add a half cup, that's 113 grams of cold diced butter. This is salted butter, but you could use unsalted butter here. And then mix this at low to medium low speed just until the mixture resembles, oh, coarse crumbs. And you'd be surprised at how well this paddle attachment uh, cuts the butter into the flour. All right, the machine has been running for about five minutes and the mixture definitely resembles coarse crumbs. So now it's time to add the liquid ingredients. So what I have here is three quarters of a cup of full fat buttermilk. That's about 191 mil. And to the buttermilk, I'm going to add two large eggs. Just whisk the eggs into the buttermilk. And then add this right into the flour mixture. And mix this at low to medium low speed, just until all of the flour is thoroughly moistened. In other words, there shouldn't be any dry particles of flour at the bottom of the bowl. That's going to take about three minutes, so I'll come back. Okay, we're all mixed here. Let me show you. So this dough is still sticky, but it has really nice structure. And as you probably guessed, these scones bear no resemblance to southern biscuits. Let me grab my spatula here. Knock all of this beautiful dough off of the paddle attachment. Yeah, these scones are totally different from Southern biscuits or any other like typically American scones because <clears throat> we're actually going to knead the dough. So now, lightly flour your work surface. And I'm just using a tiny amount of flour. And then scrape the dough onto the floured board. And sprinkle a little flour on top. Not much. 
and then knead the dough. Yeah, these scones are really nice because they really hold up well. You can spread them with jam and clotted cream. Better roll my sleeves up here. Yeah, spread them with jam, clotted cream. They don't fall apart. They're not real crumbly, but they are light and they are flaky. Yeah, I had, let's see, I purchased a scone from my local farm store recently, and it's one of those scones that they cut into wedges, and I ate it in the car. That was a big mistake. This thing was so dry and crumbly, and of course it was filled with all kinds of dried fruit. The thing fell apart when I took <laughs> just one bite and made a huge mess on my lap. And yeah, it was just very messy to eat. These scones are neat and tidy. Now you can see this dough isn't sticking at all. It's a really easy dough to work with. Okay, now I'm going to need this Oh, for probably five minutes, just until it's really smooth and not at all sticky to the touch. Okay, I'm back because I wanted to remind you that when you knead dough, you simply fold the dough over on itself and then push it out with the heel of your hand. like so, and you always turn the dough as you're working. Give it a little, like, quarter turn. Okay, this is looking terrific. It's fairly smooth, and that's what we want. So now, cover the dough with plastic wrap. and let it rest for 15 to 30 minutes. And during that time, the flour will become fully hydrated and the gluten will relax so that the dough will be easy to roll out. I'll come back in about 15 minutes. So the dough has rested for about 20 minutes. Now uncover it, and then once again, sprinkle just a wee bit of flour on your board. And then flip the dough so the smooth side is on the bottom. And then going to roll this out to a thickness of about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, this is a really easy dough to work with. Very different from a biscuit dough. Now I'm not adding any flour here because my rolling pin is not sticking to the dough. But if yours sticks, then go ahead and flour the top of the dough. But just flour it very lightly. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Have my ruler. It's about one inch, so I want to go a little flatter. That's it. Okay, now, I'm going to use my two inch diameter cutter here. And I'm putting a little flour over here in the corner. And then you want to dip your cutter into the flour. 
and then cut out rounds. There, I have 10 biscuits from this first rollout. And we will be rolling out the scraps. So then, arrange the biscuits, the, not the biscuits, arrange the scones on a parchment lined baking sheet. These really don't spread, so you can space them fairly close to each other. So what do I have here? Three, six, nine, here's ten. Okay, now I'm going to roll out the scraps. I'm going to gather those scraps together. Knead them just briefly. Roll them out. I'm going to need a little flour on top here. Now, this recipe should make 16 to 18 scones. So this is going to give me 14. I'm going to put these on my baking sheet and then roll out the remaining. Actually, you can just flatten it with your hand. Right, so I have 16 scones here. And <clears throat> now, at this point, you could freeze the scones unbaked. Just put the whole baking sheet in the freezer. And when the scones are solidly frozen, you can transfer them to a Ziploc bag. Now, I will be baking mine today, so I'm going to cover these with cling film and I'm going to let them rest for about 20 minutes. Now we want to make a little glaze for these scones so that they have a beautiful brown top. So what I have here is one large egg. And just beat that quickly. And then beat in just a tiny amount of either water or milk, about a teaspoon. And be sure to spill the milk. Clean that up. Neatness counts. Okay. And here are the scones that have been resting for about 20 minutes. And then you want to brush this egg mixture just on the top of each scone. Try not to spill any of the glaze over the sides of the scones. From what I've read, if the glaze goes on the sides, it will interfere with the scones ability to rise. That might be a myth, I'm not sure. Okay, while I'm glazing these, I wanted to tell you that if you are ever in London, be sure to make a reservation to have afternoon tea at Brown's Hotel. It's a beautiful hotel. It's, I think it's Edwardian. And I remember the room in which we had our tea was just really beautifully decorated. A lot of really nice woodwork. Yeah, it was a great experience. But then I've had afternoon tea at many different places in London and also in Paris. But Brown's Hotel certainly stands out amongst all the tea venues. Okay. Okay. 
Now I'm going to let these scones rest for about 15 minutes, then I'm going to glaze them again. And while this glaze is drying, I'm going to preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the, let me talk with you, that is the conventional setting, not the convection setting. All right, my oven has preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm going to quickly brush the scones with another coating of the egg wash or the glaze. And I wanted to tell you that if you're interested in seeing all of my recipes for afternoon tea, well, I have a playlist called Afternoon Tea. So I hope you'll watch those videos. Okay, now these, well, let me talk with you. All right, these go into the preheated 375 degree oven until they puff and the tops turn golden brown. That's going to take about 15 minutes, but you should check your oven after 12 minutes. You don't want to overcook the scones. And here are the scones, all proudly puffed and beautifully browned. I'm going to let them cool for just a little, and then we can have a taste. Now, you would think that since these scones were so thoroughly mixed and kneaded that they would be as tough as hockey pucks. But look at this. You can now actually split them just with your hands. And look, they're very soft and moist on the inside. Now, normally I would serve scones with either whipped cream or clotted cream and jam, but I didn't make any clotted cream. So I'm going to have mine with butter and strawberry jam. It's a little dollop of jam here. And then a taste. Bon appétit. Mm. Delicious. Soft and tender. A lovely crust from the egg wash. Mm. I think this is as good or possibly even better than the scones I had at Brown's Hotel. Well, no matter which scones you're used to making, I hope you will give these scones a try. They really are uniquely delicious. And again, you can freeze them unbaked. Then you can invite a friend over for tea and scones and your only work will be to brew the tea, thaw the scones, brush the tops with egg wash and pop them in the oven. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will post the list of ingredients in the description below. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.